Hello everyone. Today I have a truly massive update to share with you something that could completely change how we view both Neo and McLaren in the years ahead. We're talking about a partnership that not only strengthens Neo's financial position, but also opens up a whole new revenue stream that very few saw coming. When I first came across this news, it immediately struck me as a game changer. Why? Because it's not just about selling electric vehicles anymore. It's about NEO moving into a position where its cutting-edge technology becomes a foundation for other global carmakers, and the name McLaren immediately stands out because of its long legacy of performance, speed, and exclusivity. Now imagine those qualities being blended with NEO's electrification expertise, its autonomous driving technology, and its focus on production efficiency. The result is potentially groundbreaking. In today's video, I'm going to walk you through exactly what this new partnership between McLaren and NEO means, why Abu Dhabi's billions of dollars in investment matter so much, and how NEO could soon start earning just as much if not more from its technology partnerships as it does from selling its own EVS. And by the end, I think you'll agree with me, this isn't just the beginning of a new chapter for NEO, it might be the beginning of an entirely new business model that reshapes the auto industry. This is not financial advice. Please do your own research. So let's start with the basics. McLaren, as many of you know, is one of the most iconic automotive brands in the world. It has built its reputation on two-seater supercars machines that are synonymous with Formula One racing DNA and uncompromising design. But McLaren has been under pressure to evolve. The supercar market is niche, and as regulations tighten and consumer demands shift, the brand simply cannot remain confined to that small segment. Enter Abu Dhabi. Through its investment arm, Abu Dhabi poured more than $2 billion into NEO, securing a huge stake in the company. To put that into perspective, this isn't some small side bet. This is a commitment that shows absolute confidence in NEO's long-term future. And now, that same investment entity is also deeply connected to McLaren. It's this overlap of ownership and interest that has paved the way for a strategic partnership between McLaren and NEO. The deal itself is very clear. McLaren will gain access to certain NEO technologies in exchange for financial benefits that flow directly into NEO. According to NEO's CEO, this was a major reason why the company's Q2 non-vehicle sales revenue surged past $400 million. Think about that for a moment. That's hundreds of millions in revenue that didn't come from selling a single NEO car. It came from leveraging technology and know-how. And this is only the start. Why is McLaren so interested in NEO's tech? Well, the CEO of McLaren recently confirmed that the brand is preparing to launch a new model with more than two seats. This is a big deal because McLaren has historically stayed away from anything larger than a two-seat supercar. While the company has produced some special vehicles in the past, the heart of McLaren's identity has always been the two-seat, track-focused sports machine. But times are changing. Following an acquisition by Saudi CYVN, another Middle Eastern investment powerhouse that happens to hold around 20% of Neo McLaren is rethinking its strategy. The brand wants to expand its lineup by 2030, entering new segments beyond just supercars. That means SUVs, four-seaters, and potentially even models that appeal to families rather than just collectors and enthusiasts. And here's where Neo comes in. McLaren plans to incorporate NEO's components and software into its future vehicles. This will streamline production, reduce costs, and accelerate the electrification of its lineup. Officials from McLaren have already stated that the brand's future offerings will be much more diverse, and that reliance on shareholder technologies like those from NEO will play a central role. Now let's break down what this means financially. In Q2, the millions that flowed into NEO from the McLaren partnership were tied to a single McLaren model, just one. Imagine what happens when McLaren expands into multiple models, including SUVs or four-seaters, all of which rely on NEO tech. We're talking about a revenue pipeline that could easily rival NEO's own EV sales. Think about it like this. 
NEO currently earns money through car sales, battery swapping, charging infrastructure, lifestyle products, and software subscriptions. But now, it has a completely new revenue stream, licensing and selling technology to other automakers. These sales come with far better margins than manufacturing cars, because the R&D is already done in-house. Once a system like NEO's autonomous driving chip or its battery management system is built, it can be sold repeatedly with little additional cost. This means NEO could see explosive growth in profitability. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if, within the next three to four years, NEO's revenue from non-EV sales is equivalent to or even greater than its revenue from selling cars. And all of this is happening because brands like McLaren view NEO as the only company capable of delivering the kind of tech they need. That level of trust says everything about where NEO stands today. Here's what really excites me. McLaren is just the first. If McLaren is willing to adopt NEO's technology, other luxury and performance brands will surely take notice. The automotive industry is at a crossroads, and many traditional manufacturers are struggling with electrification. The cost of developing competitive EV platforms and advanced autonomous systems is enormous, and many companies simply don't have the expertise or scale to do it efficiently. NEO, on the other hand, has already built this expertise. Its in-house developments include software, hardware, chips, and infrastructure that are proven in the market. For example, NEO's Shenji NX9031 autonomous driving chip, a component developed in-house, has been made available for licensing. The CEO has gone on record saying that if any company is interested in using it, NEO will share it. That kind of openness is rare in this industry, and it positions NEO as a supplier as well as a competitor. This is why I believe we'll see multiple automakers partnering with NEO before 2030. The company's tech is simply too good to ignore, and for other car makers, partnering is cheaper and faster than developing from scratch. So what does this all mean in the bigger picture? For NEO, this isn't just about selling more cars. It's about transforming into a technology powerhouse. The company is already earning revenue from battery swaps, charging services, lifestyle products, and of course, vehicle sales. But now, tech licensing adds a high-margin business on top of everything else. The impact on gross margins is significant. When NEO sells hardware or software to a third party like McLaren, the margins are far higher than on a car sale. That's because there are no manufacturing costs tied to steel, aluminum, or assembly lines. Instead, it's about selling intellectual property and scalable components. Every time a McLaren with NEO tech rolls off the line, NEO gets paid without having to build the car itself. This makes NEO's financial foundation much more stable. Even if vehicle sales fluctuate, tech licensing can provide steady income. And as more brands adopt NEO technology, the revenue becomes increasingly diversified. So where do we go from here? I think the writing is on the wall. McLaren's move is just the start. Over the next five years, we're going to see more and more automakers turn to NEO for help with electrification, autonomous driving, and production efficiency. It might start with luxury brands like McLaren, but it could easily expand into mainstream manufacturers as well. And the beauty of this model is scalability. Once NEO develops a system, it can be sold to dozens of brands without significantly increasing costs. That means exponential growth in revenue potential. I'm not exaggerating when I say that, in the long term, NEO could evolve into something much bigger than just a car company. It could become the intel of the auto industry, the company whose chips, systems, and platforms power vehicles across the globe, even if those cars don't carry a NEO badge. To wrap it all up, here's the key takeaway. The partnership between McLaren and NEO is a massive milestone. It shows that NEO's technology is so advanced, so reliable, and so efficient that one of the world's most iconic car makers is willing to integrate it into its future vehicles. The Abu Dhabi investment has played a crucial role in connecting these dots, and the financial rewards are already showing up in NEO's quarterly results. But what excites me most is the potential going forward. 
as McLaren expands into SUVs, four-seaters, and beyond, NIO stands to earn millions, possibly billions, from licensing its tech. And if other automakers follow McLaren's lead, NIO could soon be generating more from partnerships than from its own EV sales. This is just the beginning. NIO isn't only building cars anymore. It's building the future of the auto industry, and other brands are starting to take notice. So buckle up, because the next few years could be absolutely transformational. Thank you for joining us today. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel for more stock predictions and market insights. Remember to turn on the notification bell so you never miss an update. Happy investing, and see you in the next video.